Hi everybody, I'm going to show you how to use FunWave and MATLAB to create a plot or movie of a simple case. And the case we're going to be looking at today is of two vessels in a fairly narrow channel um, traveling towards each other. And uh, we can, you can actually find this case um, in the FunWave GitHub listed under simple cases as vessel flat bottom. And to make sure everything's up correctly, let's look at the input file. And so looking at the input file, some things you may take note of. Um, if you're, if you're running, uh, this in parallel, make sure that the number of processors is consistent, um, uh, with this, which essentially means that, um, you're assigning X many uh, processors to, um, calculate on a certain axis. And so since I have six tours in my computer that I want to use, I'm going to be uh, running six tours uh, calculating on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, it's just going to be one. Um, I can actually specify it just to be like this. And if I want to put two on the y-axis, um, but for this, I'm just going to make it simple and just use uh, six on the x-axis. And where we also see the depth, uh, depth here. Um, in this case, uh, we're just going to make it a flat channel um, with a depth of 10 meters. Um, and another thing that you want to note is that you want to specify the result folder of where we're going to actually have our data uh, put in. And so we can see that um, the result folder is going to be found um, by FunWave over here. Um, I've already run this simulation before, um, but just to show y'all, I'm just going to uh, give us a clean slate. And there are a couple of things, such as the dimension of what we're looking at. And if we take a look at our case over here, we want it to be 500 meters by 100 meters in the channel. And that's exactly what we have as the grid dimensions um, for the model. And our time interval. So our total time um, that we're going to run the model for is 50 seconds uh, at every one second. We're going to have um, data produced. And for our grid, this is going to um, help us figure out the specific resolution of what we want. And we're going to make it one by one, which means that this is going to be uh, one meter by one meter. So this is going to be 500 meters, 100 meters. If I wanted to increase the resolution of the model, I would have to tinker around with um, the grid and dimension over here. Um, but for now, this is okay. And for the ship weights, uh, we actually have two vessels um, in the uh, input folder. And if we actually look at the vessels, um, if I open it with Notepad, um, we'll be able to see all the information regarding both of the vessels. And if, let me open the other vessel here. Okay, both of them, we can see, you know, each vessel, we can see all the uh, specific stuff, such as uh, the length of this vessel is actually going to be half of the second vessel. Uh, we can see their starting positions and we can, we can see the time interval that's been specified and we can actually calculate the speed. And if we looked at the figure, um, this is the speed that each one's going to be moving at. And the final thing you want to make sure is that we're actually going to be producing um, data that we can actually use in MATLAB. Um, so in the output section, you want to specify ETA to be true, which is going to be our data for depth. Save that and let's head over into bash over here. And so I've already um, put my directory into uh, FunWave over here. Um, if you want to know how to run FunWave uh, through the command line on Windows, uh, I have a tutorial on that for Windows 10. Um, otherwise, you can use a virtual machine or just you know a Linux machine to avoid all of, uh, those issues. Um, 
but let's actually run the model. So I'm going to, I've already run my make file with the uh, input file that I want to use. And so let's go in and run it. So I want to specify six processors and I want to specify the path of the executable file that pro was produced by the make file. And we have a run. And so what this is going to do is as this is running, we can actually see it in real time, um, producing uh, data for us here, which is pretty cool. And while this is running, I'm going to pull up MATLAB over here. And what we're going to be looking at is some of the post processing files that are in the GitHub. And if we go over to the post processing folder, I've already ha uh, opened up the um, uh, plot wave vessel uh, M file, which if I were to run it after the thing is done, yep, it's done. So if I were to run it now, there you go. We are able to see a snapshot at 20 seconds and 40 seconds of the ship weights. And uh, just to make this clear, I've already um, specified a directory of where um, the ETA files are. And um, we're actually going to be using this to produce a movie of the uh, model. So let's go over to a new file and I've um, already produced a M file here, make movie vessel and tease for tutorial. And so let's set it up and I'm gonna be using the same directory of where I, of where I stored my uh, ETA files. And so now there are a couple of steps to making this. Uh, one, I want to set up my figure correctly. So I'm going to be loading in an ETA file, which is um, what this M file does. And I want to uh, specify the size of the grid we're working with. And so this is going to um, give us a uh, vector of the uh, ETA file sizes because the ETA file produces, will produce a um, a large matrix that has the depth data at each point, which at, uh, which actually represents a depth data at each um, point um, on our coordinate plane over here, which is why we can see that our um, ETA variable that, that was used um, in this M file is 100 by 500. And so we're going to also use the same data here and this is just setting up um, the grid over here and we're also specifying the uh, grid dimensions that we did in the input file and now we want to specify the number of uh, ETA files that we're going to use and in this case it only took uh, um, data from seconds 20 and 40 which we can, we can see in the figure um, let's see, in the figure over here. And since we're running a movie, we actually want to go through all the frames. So we're going to specify every file. So we're going to make a vector running from second zero to 49 at intervals of one. And we can just confirm that it runs from 0 to 49 by looking at the output, which is going to show us that I am right. And we also want to specify the uh, time um, that each of these files occur at, which is you know per minute over here. And since it really only needed two times, it's, it's 20 and 40 seconds, we're going to specify all times here. So we're going to do that as well. And then we're going to set up the figure dimensions. Um, so for this one, 
It's using a width of 8 and a length of 5 according to the set units um, specified by uh, this line here. Um, since the plot was using um, subplots, we actually want this to be slightly smaller because we don't want like a too big of a plot or else it's going to not make the channel look very narrow. Um, and now we have that done, let's set up our uh, video writer object. This is the um, object we're ultimately going to be using to create a video. So let's set it up. And let's name it um, uh, vessel, oh, and vessel movie. And by default, it comes as an AVI fi file. If you want to make sure it comes out as like an MP4, you want to do MP4 over here. And then you want to specify it's going to be an MPEG4 um, file. Um, but AVI is just fine for this. And let's set the frame rate of the uh, object to be say 12 frames and if you wanted to increase um, the rate of what you see on screen you would generally increase that to you can say like uh, 24 if you want to see it twice as fast um, because we're only, be, only going to be producing around uh, 50 frames of uh, uh, our model so let's open our object here so we can actually write frames into it. And we see some of the framework that we actually need to create the movie here uh, represented um, in this loop over here. And so we are, so we want to take each edit file, we want to produce a plot using it, and we want to write it into our movie. And so we're going to create a for loop and it's going to run the number of files we have, which we um, defined in this variable over here. And right here, we're going to be loading in each um, ETA file. And so we're going to, so the number, we're going to specify it um, using the sprint F uh, function, which is going to give us a five digit representation of whatever. Um, a, I guess number or edit file we're at, um, or the index uh, specified in the for loop. And we're going to take that and set our eta variable to load um, whatever and a file the loop wants to use to produce a frame. All right. Now we can just simply use the pseudo color plot uh, function, which will do what we want. So if we looked at the figure here, um, what we want to do is that we will have depth data at each point. It, and we want to color it a certain color based on the depth over, over here. So we will run the function here and make it flat shading so we can actually um, see it without the outline. And we want, let's hold the figure and let's adjust our color axis to be a bit better. So we can see um, the ship weights a whole lot better. Um, this was found in the plot M file. And then we can take advantage of all of the um, labeling used in the M file. And this is gonna be the labeling that we saw 
um, when we use this M file to plot um, uh, the model. And then finally, we're going to just make sure that the representation representation of depth is um, right by using an OpenGL render um, of uh, what is it the Z buffering algorithm, which will help give us better uh, representations of the depth data. All right, and now we have. So now we want to get our frame here from the current figure. And we want to write that into our video object. All right, now we have that loop done. This is going to run a, um, this is going to load all the frames and write it into the video object. And then we can finally close the video object and we'll have a proper movie done. So let us save this and we can test it out. So let's run it, make movie vessel tutorial. And let's see. Oops, I did not actually write frame rate, I wrote video frame writer for some reason. Okay, let's run this again. Uh, let's see. Oh, one thing I forgot to do. Okay, one thing I forgot to do. And so in the plot file here, it's going to uh, produce titles um, based off a string um, specified here. However, we're going to be, we're, we actually defined a, um, was a numeric vector here. And so we're just simply going to using um, a num a numeric to string uh, function here. All right. And after that, should work. And we can see it, the frames being rendered in real time. And if we head over to our post-processing folder, we'll be able to see our vessel movie and we can watch it back. And that's it. Um, we have produced a uh, movie for a simple case that we got data by running FunWave and plotting it in MATLAB.